hey everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to part one of my Romance-a-thon reading vlog. So this morning I started the group books, which is If I Never Met You by Vari McFarlane. I think I said her name incorrectly in my TBR, so forgive me for that. It is pronounced Vari and I am listening to that on audio via Hoopla. And I'm like three or four hours in. So far, I am liking it. It's a little slow, um, but it's about a woman who has been with this guy for like 18 years. And then all of a sudden, he breaks up with her. And like, she's like 36 now. Her chances of starting over are slim to none, in her opinion. And so she is a lawyer. She's just kind of, we're figuring out how she's picking up the pieces, how she's moving on. And it's okay. Um, he also has gone on to do some different things. And so we're hearing about him as well, but we're just getting it from our main character's perspective. So that is the group book that also can fit like most of the prompts, but I'm just using that for the group book and a romance published in 2020. So that's what I'm going to be reading today. It's 845 right now. I'm going to go feed Annie and then I'm going to go to the chiropractor and see if we can get this, um, hip glute sacrum whatever thing going on um figured out a little bit more we're gonna hit it really hard this week and hopefully it will be better it is getting slowly better so that's wonderful so that's about it i will check in later and let you know how i'm progressing with if i never met you hey everyone it is about 11 40 on tuesday and i am here sitting waiting for grocery pickup and i just thought i'd get on and let you know i finished if i never met you by Vari mcfarland and I ended up giving it two stars. I just really didn't like it. And as a women's fiction lover and all of that, like I don't mind slow character studies that are really just getting in, in with this person, but I didn't really relate to her or like, I just didn't care for her really. And so it's about a girl who her boyfriend of 18 years just randomly breaks up with her and says like, basically he doesn't see a future. And we find out there is more to that situation, but Anyway, so she starts fake dating a coworker. It's kind of mutually beneficial for both of them. So she starts fake dating him, and of course, it turns into more. Well, the whole book, first of all, it's like 450 pages, and it's just long and slow, and like it's really kind of her grieving this past relationship and like getting over it, which she's 36 years old and he broke up with her after 18 years. Like that's half of her life. And now she's 36. She wants kids. And so she's like, gosh, I'm 36 and starting all over. And so I totally understand why that would take like a long time to get over regardless of who it is. Just that life circumstance is scary. And I think they did a very, she did a very good job of like making you feel that, um, kind of fear and, heartbreak that goes with that but like so that was the first 50 or 100 pages and then the rest of it is just so slow and I did not care about the fake dating relationship that it, it, it was a major playboy that she works with and I thought the moments of like vulnerability where they really grew in their relationship were very in, like convenient and inauthentic and I just didn't care for it so two star then, um, so I, I didn't sleep well last night, so I got a lot of reading done. So I picked up um, Baking It Up As I Go Along by Marion Keys. And this one, if you saw my TBR, it's romance adjacent. <laughs> Marion Keys is a romance author slash women's fiction author. And she wrote this book all about um, just random musings. Like I guess she writes maybe a blog or she writes articles for something. And so it's a lot of collections of blogs or articles about um, just her thoughts on different things like food, relationships, um, being a woman, all of that kind of stuff. And I don't really like that type of book, so it's not really fair for me to be overly critical of this. Hold on, my groceries are coming. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, so it's not really fair for me to be overly critical because I knew I wouldn't like it, but she does come from a very, very privileged place and she doesn't acknowledge that at all like she's talking about how she got kind of addicted to professional eyelash extensions and uh, like how often she would do that and nail polish and like the brands of nail polish she likes and like just very very um hard to relate to if especially if you are a person who doesn't have all the advantages she does like i just thought it at parts it was almost like Ugh. So I read most of it and just kind of skimmed different articles and parts because you can like jump around. It's sectioned into different um, 
aspects of life and so you can kind of jump around and I read a little bit of everything and then decided that was enough so another two stars and that one was um, for the challenge of a, tit a title of five words or more so making it up as I go along <laughs> seven words and so yeah that one not very good so then this morning I have just kind of I've watched a YouTube video or two in the time I've had um, because I just am like gun shy to pick anything else up but I'm gonna pick up you and me always by Jill Mansell and this one I'm really excited about it's about a girl who I think her mom like her mom has died and left her a bunch of letters and so she opens the last letter and then meets up with this guy and her like childhood best friend is like this guy's no good and I don't know I haven't even started it so I don't know that's just from the back what I think so that is everything bookish life-wise um so we live in a town that has a college and kids are starting to come back for practices like football and that kind of stuff and so we have had a skyrocketing amount of cases and so our town is starting to shut back down. So all the restaurants that have been open in some capacity have now shut down. Um, any business where a, an employee has tested positive has shut down. And so things are um, really kind of regressing in some ways, but then in other ways, like large gatherings are being allowed of like 250 or something now. So there's a lot of weirdness going on right now and so um yesterday jeremy ended up cutting my bangs because i have these bangs you know and we i have a friend that normally comes and cuts them and so i'm not really worried about it but just um we just decided he would do it and jeremy is one of those guys who like it's like jeremy do you know how to crochet and he's like yeah i did it once when i was 12 and made a sweater or something and it's like jeremy do you can you name 10 different species of birds yes and i can do their sounds and stuff like he just has so much random knowledge and so many random skills that i feel and he's also like very very um anal about things <laughs> so i feel pretty good having him cut my hair because he's very um precise and so he did it and he did a great job and it was free and it was fast and that was awesome so we did that um i'm trying to think yesterday too we had a big storm last night so i was watching a romance in defense of romance um conversation on jen from the book refuge's page and we were having 50 mile an hour winds it was crazy and we live in a like we live in kansas but we live in a, on the east side of the state where it's more hilly and that kind of stuff so 50 mile an hour winds is not common for us so it was crazy um and never like they said hail and stuff but never we never really got any of that it was just very 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 windy and weird and um, I'm trying to think what else happened yesterday. Nothing really, I guess. Um, Ainsley's still doing great being a big sister. She's rocking it. Annie actually slept and only woke up once last night, but I woke up more times than not because I am nursing her. And so I'm used to feeding her every two or three hours. So her going like four hours was really painful for me. So, um, yeah, I didn't sleep that great, but she did. And then today I just went to the chiropractor again, then got a prescription and then now I'm getting grocery pickup and I'm going to go home and um, I just got a text that Annie is hungry. So I'm going to go feed her, feed the rest of us. And then this afternoon, um, Ainsley, when she was a baby, she had lip tie, like her tongue was tied down, her lip was tied and then her cheeks were tied. And I guess that's a lot more common than you would know. And so with her, we didn't discover it till she was like four months old and she was having nursing problems and that kind of stuff. And so it was a big deal. We went and got them all cut and she kind of did better, but by that point she was four months old. And so her like way of nursing was already so established. It was hard for her to change that. And so um, this afternoon I'm having my friend who is a therapist in that field come check Annie's mouth. And sometimes it, it's hard to catch this early, but if she can just kind of see how tight things are, she can give us a good guess of if a tie is going to form or not and hopefully make it so we find out a lot sooner if she does have a tie. So that is what's going on today. I will check in later when I have more thoughts on you and me always. Hey everyone. So it has been a day. Um, I found out Annie's little evaluation thing did not go well. She's got a double, um, double lip tie and tongue tie and possible cheek tie. So 
I spent the afternoon trying to figure out um, the person we went to for Ainsley does not have any appointments for over a month. And so um, I got her into somebody else for July 1st. So that makes me feel good, but it's just been a stressful, emotional day. Um, and so I have not done any reading. And I will do some reading when I go to bed. Hey everyone, it is Thursday, Wednesday. I don't know what day it is. I think it's Wednesday and I really don't have anything to update because guys, I'm in a slump. Ah, this like never happens to me. It, it's very rare that it happens, but when it happens, it happens hard. I think those first two books being two stars really screwed me up. And then I have read three chapters of, um, the Joe Mansell book I'm reading. I'll put it, I'll put the cover up because I can't even remember the title because that's how little time I've spent with the book. And it's not at all that I'm not interested in the book because I very much am. And the first three, three chapters have gone very nicely and I like the writing style. I'm interested in the plot. I just don't want to read. I've been watching booktube last night. I um, was so tired when I went to bed. Like I didn't even have the energy to do booktube, but I wanted something in the background. So I watched some Lizzie McGuire and I think I watched like uh, five minutes and fell asleep. It's just been um, exhausting. And yesterday, like I said, was kind of a emotional, stressful day, figuring out Annie had all those ties in her mouth and kind of just reliving the things we went through with Ainsley. And so I just didn't want to read. So um, I've asked some of my friends for tips and tricks to getting out of this slump and the like resounding or resounding advice is to do audiobooks. And so I have one audiobook left on my TBR and I might switch to that, but I'm going to see how nap time goes today. If I can get some reading done and really get into the book, then I think I'll be okay. Um, but if I can't, I will probably switch to my audiobook. So that is what's going on. I just left the chiropractor. I am going to take Annie with me on Friday to get her um, like adjusted and stuff. And that's supposed to help with um, the oral stuff, especially right before her um, uh, appointment to get them cut. And so that'll be good. I just feel good being a little bit more proactive with it to hopefully catch it early and make it not as big of a deal as it was for Ainsley. So um, that's what's going on. I'm trying to think yesterday. Um, I don't even know when I updated. This is going to be the messiest vlog ever, but we didn't really do anything <laughs> special. So, uh, yeah, that is about the days. Like, um, the chiropractor said, so what are you doing the rest of the afternoon? And I'm like, I don't know with a two year old and a newborn. I'm, I don't even know. I'm not even trying to make plans. So that is what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm going to go home, make some lunch and hopefully do some reading this afternoon. Hey everyone, it is 5.45 on Wednesday and I'm just sitting here editing the first part of this vlog and I am going to close it out here and start part two tomorrow because I just feel like I need a fresh start. <laughs> um, I read during nap time, but I also did like some thank you cards because we got some baby gifts this week and just we had to fill out an application for Annie's um, social security card and a copy of her birth certificate or something. And so I did all that kind of stuff and then I read for a little bit and then, you guys, I took an epic nap. I just took Annie upstairs, and she fell asleep. And so then I fell asleep, and it was one of those sleeps where, like, I woke up, and I was like, what time is it? And I was, like, afraid to look at my clock, thinking it was going to be super-duper late. And it was, like, 4.30. And so I think we probably slept like 45 minutes, but I am a terrible napper. And prior to pregnancy, I would lay down almost every nap time and never nap. And this time it's just like, I don't know if it's just being comfortable, if it's being up so much in the night or what it is, but it is wonderful. So I um, am going to wrap this up. I read like until chapter eight or nine, I think in uh, You and Me Always. And I'm starting to think it is kind of the book. And this book my sister gave to me and I asked her if she liked it and she said no. So I'm in a chat with a couple other like romance reading friends and some of them asked me what Jill Mansell's I've read and which ones I liked. And so I got on Goodreads to look and like I'm not sure I'm actually a fan of hers. I thought I was, but I gave her other books three, four, three, four and five stars, but they are like from the rating days when like anything I enjoyed got five stars. So I'm thinking she's probably not my favorite author. I don't know. My sister also said she typically likes her and didn't like this one. So, um, like I said, it's about a girl who she gets letters from her mom, but she turns 25 at the beginning of this book. Obviously I'm still at the beginning, but she turns 25 and the last letter from her mom is one where she's like turning 25 and the mom, um, I can't, I don't know what she died of. I'm guessing like cancer or something, 
But she said she's on morphine, and so she's like, her letters are about to end because they're upping her morphine, so she's going to be sleeping all day. So this is the last letter. And so that was really emotional, but that's the only letter, and just it was half a page. And the rest of the book is her relationship with this guy named Dan, who is her childhood best friend, and then his older sister, um, I'm Patsy or something, I can't remember her name, but she took care of our main character when she was a kid. And then, and then Patsy, or whatever her name is, it, that's probably not what it is, but the older sister, she is harboring a um, movie star. And so we don't know, he like is escaping just the limelight, trying to get out, of, you know, get trying to get a little vacation. And so he ends up staying with the older sister and our main character discovers that and they have a connection. So it's maybe going to be a love triangle because the relationship between her and the childhood best friend is just a friendship one and almost like a sibling one kind of, but she talks a lot about how attractive he is. So I'm guessing it's going to be a love triangle. I'm really, really hoping tonight, since I took that nap, that I can get both kids down and do some solid reading just because I've got to make headway in this. But hopefully a new section of the vlog and just a little update will help. I don't know. If you guys have tips and tricks for getting out of a slump, like would you abandon this book or what would you do? Especially with a readathon where it's like I either have to find a different prompt and plus if I like set a book down, then it automatically has a terrible taste in my mouth and I'll never go back. But it's not bad enough to DNF. So I don't know. Tips, tricks on slumps. Let me know what you think and we will see you in the next part. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching.